Well, we're here with the filmmaker from the short film Sisters. Um, Chris, introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Chris Osborne. Do I talk to you? No, you talk to me. Yeah. All right. Uh, my name is Chris Osborne. I'm the writer director of Sisters, which is playing in the late night shorts program later tonight. Yeah, definitely. Right. Um, so, where did this story come from? Was it did it start with the experience of what happened as a catalyst, or was it a I mean, do you have a sibling? Like, where the hell does this come from? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I mean, I, like many kids, grew up as a, as a sci-fi kid. I was a space kid. I was obsessed with, you know, all of those movies that came out, like, late 90s, uh, Independence Day, and Men in Black and stuff. And so for the longest time, I'd had this inkling to do a, an alien abduction story, um, which is, a, you know, a little bit different for me. I don't typically work in genre. Um, but I thought it might be a fun little realm to work in, but it didn't have kind of the, the meat to the story that I had, uh, had wanted. Um, and it wasn't until I read um, this book uh, of essays by Leslie Jameson mm -hmm. called The Empathy Exams, mm -hmm. um, which is a, a book of nonfiction essays that kind of mel memoir and cr critique and all of these different things uh, surrounding the concept of empathy. And, you know, rooting that idea of um, empathy, which is trying to enter, or access the pain of another person, it seemed like an interesting way to, to blend like a supernatural trauma that you might not know exactly what happened uh, with gaining empathy for someone you really love. Hmm. So that was kind of the catalyst for it. What made you decide it to be sisters and maybe not like brothers? I mean, what was it about the female perspective in particular um, maybe in the sense that if this wasn't an extraterrestrial event and it was just like a, a rape or something of that sort, did, was that why the choice of the sisters or was it, you know um, what I mean? You know, I think that in terms of um, when we're looking at trauma, mm -hmm. um, there, especially a trauma that isn't explained, that doesn't have discrete edges, that is constantly questioned in our society, um, you know, I think that to you to evoke like the supernatural to root it in more of those like earthly traumas, um, where many of the survivors of those such traumas are women. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that perspective um, uh, was very much intentional. That the film centering on two women discussing what may have happened to one of them. Um, you know, I think the, the choice was intentional to make a film in which the audience is forced to listen to a woman tell us what happened to her. Um, and so I, I felt like it was, more, it was more interesting to me as a filmmaker to approach it from that standpoint. Uh, and I think it gave it a little bit more weight. And also in the more practical sense, you know, uh, in my research about alien abduction stories, uh, most of the people who claim to have had a close encounter or an experience um, are women, like middle-aged women in rural communities yeah. um, who are, you know, like for worse, like not taken seriously about that experience. Um, so I, I, yeah, I think it just made sense for all of the narrative and thematic threads to root it with like a sisterhood bonding in this trauma uh, rather than any other relationship. Let's talk about casting these two wonderful actresses and yes. the young girl. She was also very well cast yes. as well. Yeah, let's let's talk about that. Yeah. Like first, was it Lindsay Jade? How did this all come about? Um, well, I was working with a fantastic casting director uh, in New York, uh, Je uh, Jennifer Ajemian, mm. um, who uh, you know really just understood this material. Uh, and knew exactly kind of what I wanted and was just so precise about every aspect. Um, and, you know, in the back of my head, I didn't tell Jen this beforehand, um, but I, I had seen Lindsay in The Teacher, mm. and in the back of my head, it's like, wow, it would be so cool if we got, like, Lindsay Burge in this movie. Uh, but I thought she was kind of out of reach, you know, because she is on the rise and oh, yeah. should keep going, you know? I mean, I think she, for my money, is like one of our best actresses. Um, but I didn't tell Jen that. She reached that conclusion herself and said, hey, I know this actress. 
uh, I had worked with her on a uh, past project. Uh, how about Lindsay Burge? And I was like, whoa, okay, we're, something is happening here where we're totally in sync on that. Um, so it was an, it was a, a uh, an untraditional way to cast um, her. We, we talked on Skype. Uh, she's based in Los Angeles. I'm based in New York. Uh, and just talked about the movie and just talked about her feelings about it, where her head was at with this character, with the themes. Um, and it, it was a very natural kind of conversation. And, and from having that, I realized she was just like perfect for the role because she totally understood all of like the very particular emotional beats that this character and what this performance would need, um, as well as the bigger picture, like what the film is about and what am I trying to say, and even helped me clarify that for myself. You know, I think that Lin working through working with Lindsay, uh, the film was better off, and my vision was more clarified. Um, so that was with her, and then with Jade, you know, we found her in an in audition. Wow. You know, she showed up to an audition. And the reason why I picked Jade over all of the other awesome actresses that we saw was she was the only actress who like, listened. You know, I feel like the other people who had auditioned uh, were waiting for the next line, and Jade heard every line that was spoken to her. And you see that in the film with, you know, when she really has to emote silently the whole time and just listen to what happened to her sister. You know, it was uh, it was powerful in the audition, and it was powerful on set. You know, she just really understood, uh, you know, how to give that performance what it needed, and to give it the empathy that 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 character and all and her sister like needed. So. It's so difficult to capture empathy. Mm -hmm. How did you approach the shot selection in in their? conversation like what I love about it is that you don't choose the typical way to shoot these scenes mm -hmm. I feel like and yeah. I feel like there must have been some process of we're gonna have to do something different because I really need to show the vast difference of what these two women are going through yeah sure um, I think a lot of that came from my collaboration uh, with my director of photography Ava Benjamin um, and she is one of my best friends. We grew up together, we went to college together, and collaborated on a few music videos together. So she is like my closest film partner. We have a language with each other, a shared language that uh, I haven't found with any other person uh, creatively. Uh, so, you know, I, as such, the fact that we grew up together, the fact that we've worked so closely together, there's just this shorthand where we approach filmmaking from a very similar perspective, and we know what is important to us and where we direct our attention. Um, and so in particular for this film, you know, if, if the idea behind it is, is that we need to access another person's experience, even if that experience seems so otherworldly or unbelievable to us, you know, there has to be a sensitivity to the imagery of the film that the audience, when they watch it, feel like even if what I'm seeing isn't what actually happened, it's still true. Mm -hmm. It's still real and it's still palpable. And whatever happened, the, the residue of that experience and that trauma is, uh, is real. It's, mm -hmm. it's there. And so we had talked a lot about films that do that. Um, I, I, in particular, um, you know, the Ingmar Bergman films that really uh, isolate faces and face close-ups, uh, which nobody really does much anymore, you know, and I'm, I'm surprised that that's not as, uh, as you know, well used as a, a device uh, in like the formal language of films. Um, so, you know, definitely the touchstones were those, the Ingmar Bergman films, um, you know, the silence, persona, uh, as well as another film that r is a recent example that does that, um, Paul Thomas Anderson's The Master, Ooh, yeah. um, which, you know, even in the way that we approach the story was a huge touchstone, where you have this vast, you know, sweeping narrative that's told so intimately. And 
I think we we tried to tap into what that film accomplished by, you know, hinting at the vastness of the story and the supernatural aspects, but really rooting it in a conversation between two people. Mm. So. I'm kind of curious. Uh, Lindsay's such a I don't know how to put it dynamic with her face. Like mm-hmm. her, she puts so much emotion into just looks and. Jade as well. I was blown away by her performance in that. Sure. What's it like on the other side of that filming that is not really, you know, in the script, but you want to capture all that as well. Mm-hmm. How did you decide in the editing process, like, these are the shots at work? I mean, how many takes was involved? I mean, sure. was she on point for all of it? It seems like they were, they were in it, locked in. Yeah, I mean, it was... Uh... It was honestly an intimidating experience for me as a, as a new filmmaker uh, to work with talent of this caliber. And I'm forever humbled and grateful to have had that experience of working with both Lindsay and Jade on this. Um, in terms of how I got them there on set, you know, there was a lot of, there was a lot of talk um, in rehearsal about just what this story means. We kind of kept it higher level. Um, and really delved into just like, you know, the personal aspect of what, what it's like when you're talking to somebody who has gone through something. Mm. And we, we had conversations about that. And uh, I was open about that. They were open about that and like the, in a personal sense. And I think that, you know, that had created a trust amongst the three of us um, to, to really give it are all you know there were moments where you know like I, I feel like working with Lindsay and Jade uh, was two very different experiences Lindsay being somebody who um, just kind of has her own tempo of working uh, she really uh, prefers a lot of you know time to herself to marinate in this character and uh, I really admire that about her I think it's what makes her such a powerful dynamic performer um, whereas Jade, it, it was more of a conversation with her, where on set, you know, we would kind of talk and riff back and forth, like, well, hey, well, what do you feel about this and all that? Where, whereas, like, with Lindsay, it's kind of like, let her do her thing. Her thing. Um, and then in terms of the edit, I, I had edited Sisters as well, mm-hmm. um, and that was a huge process, you know, uh, just to figure out, you know, through editing, how to let the psychology of the film drive the narrative and not the other way around, mm. um, which is something I'm very proud of with this film. I think the formal language of it is told through its editing um, and not through you know a predetermined like story structure. I think like the editing kind of brings you into these people's lives, and that's kind of what sets the pace for what unfolds. It's a longer short, it's 21 minutes, which has been a huge issue with programming <laughs> at festivals. Uh, and I, I thank you guys for you know, finding room for it. Um, but I think it does need that duration and that, mm-hmm. that you know, momentum in order to unfold. And a lot of that was just what happened on set between Lindsay and Jade. You know, they could figure out that uncomfortable kind of pace that you have with a sibling that you haven't really seen in a while and you know wanting to figure out what's going on but not push it too far uh, but also knowing what is a comfortable way to like push each other's buttons and and what like a certain pause in uh, the conversation means to the other person like they just like again like intuitively understood how to do that and I'm forever grateful to them for that I'm kind of curious then, since you, 21 minutes, that begs the question, is there hopes of expansion with this into like a feature? Or I felt like this was concrete on its own. Mm-hmm. Have you, is it separated now? Like, or, or are you looking into fleshing out this story? Uh, I'm not, you know, I, I am a huge proponent of the short form. Mm-hmm. You know, I work at Vimeo for mm-hmm. my day job uh, and I'm watching stuff every day that's short form work and it's stuff that stands alone and doesn't need to be expanded. And I, I kind of like that for this film, that it's this you know, 21 minute thing <laughs> that, well, it's not 21 minutes, but no, it's, it's 20 minutes. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's, 20, it's this 20 minute thing that really um, 
is self-contained. It's its own world, and that's all it needs to be. You know, I am definitely interested and am writing feature-length work, um, but right now, you know, the, the short world is very interesting to me in terms of figuring out what kind of filmmaker I want to be and figure out what stories I want to tell and how to do it. I think it gives you the room uh, to experiment a little bit. And I, I love I love films that can straddle that line between, you know, straight away, you know, narrative and more experimental formal language. I think that that is happening a lot. You see that happening a lot in recent independent films and it's it's a really exciting trend. I think at the forefront of that is short form work. Being short form online being really the, the main outlet for it, mm -hmm. can you talk about that and where people can maybe see Sisters in the future if possible? Sure. I mean I'm still figuring out what the online strategy is for it, which, you know, every filmmaker has to think about mm -hmm. that now. You know, that's the world that we're, we're living in. We don't have the opportunity to screen theatrically. Um, but I think that that's okay, you know. Like, working at Vimeo has, has taught me that, you know, online is such a, an amazing, you know, forefront for all types of creativity. Uh, something that I do at Vimeo is I curate um, experimental and avant-garde videos and each month in New York City I have a screening of like the weirdest stuff that I find uh, on Vimeo and uh, you know like finding out new platforms for filmmakers that are trying really daring work um, is, is really interesting to me and so I'm hoping to take a similar approach with my own film is just figure out like what's the best way to strategize this and get it in front of as many people as, as possible. Well, yeah, Sisters was kind of jarring and blew me away, and I can't wait to see what, what comes from you. And if, if you're expanding the boundaries of, of genre, I can't wait to see what's next. Great. Thank you so much. That means Thank a you. lot. Thanks, Thanks for having me.